everybody, this is Tony DeLegit with Plastics Technology Magazine. In the January issue, PT visited with Elite Precision Plastics for our monthly on-site plant tour feature. Our tour was led by Justin Heileman, Chief Strategy Officer at Elite Precision Plastics. Elite Precision Plastics is a custom injection molding business that supports and grew out of Elite Biomedical Solutions. Uh, but yeah, these are some of our parts that we manufacture today. Um, basically, what we are is a, a considered a third party compared okay. to the OEM. So um, obviously, I, I offer replacement parts for those pumps, uh, telemetry units, and patient monitorings, but at discount. Same quality. Um, that's our, our number one thing is, is just the quality needs to be there with OEM, if not better than okay. OEM. So. Elite Biomedical Solutions moved into this new space in 2012 after starting out of CEO and co-owner Jeff Smith's house. In that short time, the company has expanded from 3,400 to 34,000 square feet as eight employees became more than 60. And in terms of certifications? Uh, ISO 9001 and then ISO 13485. Okay. So, and then registered with the FDA as well. So this area is product development. Um, what we do is we'll take an OEM part, uh, we'll reverse engineer it, um, we will take the part, send it out for FTIRs, figure out what resin's in there, um, if there's any flame retardants or additives uh, like chemical resistivity. Um, as you know, there's a lot of cleaning needed in hospitals. What this blue light scanner does is you'll place a part on here. Um, this this uh, top spins uh, and it takes thousands of pictures uh, into their software uh, and then refine it, um, get it ready for models. And then the fair arm uh, behind you, that gets in a little bit more depth into some uh, areas that you can't get into with, with the blue light scanner. This is the, the Cobot. We do a lot uh, of testing in-house on, on the parts. Um, so this Cobot's actually putting uh, the battery in and out multiple times um, to see how the longevity of that part. And basically we have to uh, insinuate how many times that, that is going to be open and closed before it fails. Then we got uh, a 3D machine, uh, 3D printer. Uh, and basically this just gets, after, after we've modeled, uh, um, the part um, you'll notice over here on this table. Um, this just gets a part in our hand. Um, the resolution isn't uh, isn't going to be like a regularly injection molded part, but this is going to get you something in your hand uh, to to confirm that the design looks good. Nothing's hitting uh, once it's once it's assembled. Uh, over here, this is uh, a vision system. So this is. Um, we take measurements on this um, before the parts manufactured and after the parts manufactured. Um, and then sometimes we'll do quality checks on this as well. So this is uh, the biomed department. Um, we've got four biomeds uh, in-house. Uh, this is our resin room. Um, not, I'm sure obviously you guys are familiar with the resin, uh, but this is where we keep all of our raw goods, uh, whether it be resin, um, and then on this side right here, we keep some of our parts that are manufactured. So yeah, these are some of the parts that we, again, that we manufacture and some of the resins that we utilize. Uh, some of our volumes uh, are anywhere from, you know, 500 uh, up to 5 million pieces okay. uh, per year. You'll notice uh, this camshaft right here. This is what pumps the fluid through. Uh, and each lobe has a different radius on it. Yeah. Um, and that, that's got to be uh, five thousandths of an inch width in each other. Okay. Uh, very critical part. Yeah. Uh, again, it's, it, it, it's pumping saline, morphine, and any medicine that, you, that is going to the, the patient, uh, it's pumping through. Some of the other things that we manufacture, we, we do do over molding. So we'll manufacture this part uh, and then send it um, to another injection molding machine that will over mold uh, this TPE on it. Or, or TPU, um, and this is kind of like a soft rubbery material over, over a hard material. We can do from one gram uh, all the way up to 300 gram okay. part. So um, this is probably one of our biggest parts uh, that we manufacture in-house. Um, you know, this, this is another one right here, and, and these two that we manufacture, um, so. Uh, this is our vertical 
vertical press. So unfortunately it's not in operation yet. Um, but this is the part that we're gonna be manufacturing on the vertical machine. Um, it's insert molding. Um, and to mold this part, uh, it's much more efficient in, in, in a vertical machine than it would be in a horizontal machine. This is actually, this actually is a IUI and it's basically the interface or connection between the uh, pump and basically the brains of the unit. This is another one that we insert mold, a uh, little metal piece that goes in, in the mold, over molds a hard plastic on top of it. Uh, and then you have a, a TPE type silicone uh, material that, that is uh, injection molded on top. Uh, this was the bezel. So this is uh, all the components that you see that are plastic on here. Uh, we manufacture these parts. Um, so if you see down in here, that is this camshaft. Um, and there's a motor that goes on top of here that spins this gear, uh, which rotates this camshaft uh, and then pushes these on these occluder fingers and pusher blocks. Uh, which pushes the fluid through into the human say, or patient. And this is the uh, rear case that this goes into. Um, mainly what's going to get sprayed uh, is this front face and then the back of this, this uh, rear case when they're cleaning Lighting up. So. Or... Yep, okay. yep. Yeah, so this is the unit. Um, your IV set goes through here. Um, and this is your uh, flow stop. So that's pushed in there, um, loaded like that, and the door shuts, and it looks exactly like that. And then your your uh, your um, brains of the unit, eighty fifth, it's called an eighty fifteen, sits on the side right here, um, and then that's what you load the the milliliters that's going in into the patient. When we first started manufacturing, we brought in three machines. Um, that was back in two thousand seventeen. Uh, we started manufacturing our parts in 2018. Okay. Um, before that, this room was um, pretty much a catch-all. It was a storage unit. Okay. Um, we came in here, um, uh, put new floors in, uh, painted, uh, obviously put the crane in. During COVID, you've seen um, a lot of these labs and, and you heard a lot of the articles coming out that you know they didn't have enough supplies. They didn't have the pipette tips. They didn't have the, the transport tubes that they needed um, or the syringes. Um, so that's that's what we wanted to start uh, manufacturing. So that's what these two machines were for is contract manufacturing. So Or this mold right here uh, is for a transport tube. It's for a, a lead uh, test. Um, and basically what you're saying in manufacturing is the cap of, of the tube. Okay. Um, and we really wanted to run this, the, this lights out. Um, obviously you don't want to be inside of the clean room because the dirtiest you know, part is, is us. Yeah, right. yeah. so uh, we implemented a lot of automation here. Uh, you'll notice the nine boxes inside. Um, it drops 32 caps off in each box. Okay. Um, and I want to say it's uh, two, 200 shots uh, in each box. Once that box fills up, um, it moves on to the next box and once all three boxes are, are uh, filled to capacity, um, this light notifies you, uh, the um, AP and, and the manufacturing team light and tells them, hey, these boxes need, need changed out. So this gives us about 14 hours of run time. So this is uh, a part for inventory management. Basically, uh, hospitals buy this, this part, um, and um, you know, they'll place, let's say, 50 syringes in, in the scale. It's basically a scale. Oh. And, and it play, they'll place you know, all their different inventory in these scales. Yeah. Once a nurse comes in and takes, let's say, two out, um, it may have a, a level of, hey, notify me when we have 10 
only 10 parts it left. And then that gives you a notification that, hey, I need to order more, okay. more supplies. You know, once this conveyor belt is loaded with parts, uh, we'll check these parts over individually one by one. Yeah. So these are the three uh, Elite Biomedical Solutions machines. Uh, and these machines are utilized uh, just for, for EBS. If we do have a part that we need manufactured for EPP on this machine, yeah. uh, we will do that. Yeah, yeah, we have some flexibility. So this is, each, each time when we start up a machine, we'll have startup parts. Okay. Um, we have in-process inspections that we do. Again, could be every two hours. It depends on the part um, and how critical the part is. And that's predetermined product development stage. So every part that we uh, manufacture, has its own booklet. Okay. Um, you know, it states it has the part drawing, um, the quality parameters in it. So this is Des. She, Desiree Harmon. She's director of production for us at Elite Biomedical Solutions. So again, this is assembly. Some of the parts that we manufacture or assemble, you know, could be plastic parts that get membrane switches, um, light tower on top of this this part. Um, some of our parts, a lot of our parts have secondary operations, again, inserting, um, uh, ultrasonic welding, yeah. heat staking, things like that. Pad printing, uh, laser etching, one of the more simpler builds that we have. It's basically a back sticker, a gasket sticker inside, uh, two feet at the bottom, and then it gets it gets inserted before all that. Um, and you guys are outsourcing that. Yeah, we're outsourcing the EMI shielding, electromagnetic oh, okay. interference shielding. So and that's just the coating. That's yep, not. it's a coating, so it doesn't inter interfere with different yeah. different pumps. Okay. So, so this is one of our more uh, critical uh, parts. This is called the air in line. Um, this device actually comes off uh, the injection molding machine in two halves, um, uh, and then it has a key uh, that goes in between these parts, and it's ultrasonic welded, okay. uh, and then inserted on the back. And this is the assembly portion of it. Uh, what she's doing is she's placing a piezo chip uh, into the back of it. Uh, basically what these piezo chips do, uh, there's one on either side of it, and it's pinging a uh, uh, high frequency ping off of each other. One's a sender and one's a receiver. Um, and the, the uh, set goes in between them. And as soon as it sees an air bubble, that uh, frequency gets louder. So then it alarms out, stating, "Hey, uh, there's a bubble in line, air in line. You don't want it. You don't want it going into, into the to patient. the patient." Right. It goes through this carousel system. Um, it light cures those piezo chips. It comes out on this side, and then this assembler um, will uh, put a piece of foam over the piezo chip some more epoxy and then place this cap over top of, of the part. Um, and then it goes in right here and, and goes another round of uh, light curing. So it, it light cures that epoxy and that, that uh, tab can't come out. Uh, quality station and then this is um, our laser etching machine. Um, so we've got a product that has a date placed on it, laser etched on it. Um, the date that it's ordered because it's only good for a year. We'll come in here and fill these bins up with parts um, and then we'll receive orders from, from the hospital biomeds um, and then ship it out from here. Thanks for joining us to learn a little bit more about Elite Precision Plastics. Be sure to head to ptonline.com for more videos about companies like Elite as well as other content. Thanks for your time.